Hey, what's going on, guys? Tony here with you. Just got back from Boots on the Ground from the Heat's house as they beat the Lakers 112 to 98. A, a fairly stress free, as stress free, I guess, as, as Heat wins can go. I, I thought this was going to be even easier the way that third quarter was going, but you knew when it was like the 20, you're like, ah, too good to be true. Uh, it has to get a little dicey. Let's like make it uh, within single digits uh, before you could really put it away. But Miami does get the win, they do get back over 500 to 18 and 17 before they venture out to this tough road trip, which we'll get to for another story for another day. Uh, this is a fun game for, for a lot of reasons. Obviously it's always interesting when LeBron James returns to the home of his first two championships and didn't know if he was going to play. He has pulled this move before where he is, uh, he has come to Miami and decided to sit his cheeks on the bench and they played last night in Orlando. So at his age, you know, it would have been a little bit more understandable, um, but he did, he played. So props to LeBron who, uh, went out there and did give a valiant effort, a super, um, you know, good game from him. I would say an efficient, good game from him. As far as like, you know, he's getting his 27 points, 10 of 18 from the field. Now he did turn the ball over more than he did as a team. And that really was the story of today's game is that Lakers team was willy nilly with the old basketball. They were turning it over a ton, and the Miami Heat, they were taking advantage of it. They were uh, converting all over the place, points off turnovers. It was a cool 31 to 2 in favor of Miami. They took <laughs> they took 92 shots to LA's 77. And you could basically see that was uh the big story of this game. Never a game that really felt out of control for Miami. Um, certainly there were times where LeBron was making it interesting. That third quarter came out and Miami really pounced on him, especially Bam Adebayo, who was uh, fantastic and really was getting a lot of great looks from his teammates, including uh, Tyler Hero and Gabe Vincent. Um, Tyler, I thought, just continues to just show the the strength and where he's growing all over as far as uh, his entire game is concerned because you look tonight you didn't have QB one Kyle Lowry was out and Tyler steps in there and he gives you 18 points nine assists and I think delivered more of what they needed they needed that playmaking and he is just uh, you could just see the the eyes kind of opening up for him all over the place I asked him about this a little bit after the game and uh, yeah it's just like acknowledge no, game slowing down he's figuring things out. Um, you know, some man who's, you know, he's got a getting, there's always, this is a, this is a 22 year old vet in front of us, you know, like he's got, uh, a, a lot of years, a lot of seasons under his belt and, uh, they're asking him to do a lot more and he's doing it. That growth, I guess, been with you, like just enjoying setting up all your team this year, as opposed to being like the guy who's getting the go-to shot. Like. Um, it's, it feels good, you know, just being able to set, set guys up, you know, getting into the paint, um, drawing multiple defenders and just hitting the, the right guy to open play, and my teammates were able to knock knock down shots. And before we talk about, you know, the game slowing down, I guess the more experience you get, like, are you noticing that? Like, does, it, does it feel like game slowing down you're finding your vision of, of finding guys yeah for better. sure um from game to game there's you know different coverages and you know different things i could have to look at you know so i get sped up sometimes here and there but for the most part the game's really slowing down but the main two players in this one uh besides tyler's real clutch three which i would say kind of just iced this game put it out of reach for good uh took all thoughts of a comeback out of it was uh, the performances of Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Good to have your two best horses out there. Good to have your two best players out there. Jimmy, I thought, really set the tone for this game. It was really him and LeBron going back and forth early on in this game. And it was a fun show. I mean, those guys, look, they've had a lot of good matchups. They have a finals matchup together. There's, you know, Eastern Conference matchups with each other. It's a fun dynamic. It's a fun dynamic when it's Jimmy Butler and LeBron James going back and forth. I think they each scored a dozen in the first quarter. Um guarding each other and and it really was a, a fun performance from Jimmy who just gave you everything you know 27 points five five rebounds four assists six steals tonight for Jimmy Butler for one of the league's best at thievery he was absolutely tremendous and bam I just thought just brought a great energy um took advantage you know we, you know people always talk about bam and he doesn't take advantage of uh the aggression in the matchups. He saw Thomas Bryan tonight, and he was licking his chops, dude. He was going right at him. Um, he was aggressive. He was going after rebounds. A, a guy who, you know, is a nice player, but, you know, you're an all-star caliber player. And I thought that, 
you know, Bam brought a lot of that to the table. So that was uh, that was absolutely fantastic to see. And all over the place, just really good performances from their role guys. Gabe Vincent, who's just getting back into it. He was uh, he was all over the place, putting his fingerprints all over this game. Caleb Martin, um, this you know, <laughs> he was three of four from downtown. He, I mean, had two two buckets that were his. Uh, he was three of four from downtown, but realistically, he hit five shots. Two of those were were shots right. Uh, with his foot on the line, like he should have just he should have had five from downtown. You're talking about a, it should have been a more productive night from Caleb Martin. He is the king of that. I will say, there's nobody in this team who who loves taking a a a, 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 a jump shot with his foot right tippy toe right there on the three point line for it to be a for it to be a two pointer. But that being said, you know Spo is really uh, praising Caleb tonight. I believe the word was he was he's an excellent shooter. Um, that he he just has all the faith in the world at what he can do as a shooter, uh, especially as a spot up shooter. But he's a great spot up three point shooter, and you know I'm, I I always feel like I'm reminding him, hey, don't forget you're a great shooter. Um, this is not an aberration. You know I, I watch him in, in practice now for a year and a half. Uh, when he gets his feet set um, and he has time, he's his as good as anybody, you know, uh, out there. He's proven that, man. There was so much criticism on what he was going to bring to the starting lineup, what kind of a detriment he was going to be to the starting lineup, and there's been no detriment here. He's uh, He continues to ascend as a find for Miami, um, and it's been really great. And I thought Vic tonight, you know, it's so interesting because you think with Victor Oladipo, he's trying to get back to the spot, right? He's trying to get back to the spot of, of being an all-star caliber player and being a guy who is thought of as one of the best two-way players in the game. But I just thought tonight, even with it being a, you know, you look at it and you say, Ugh, one of one of seven, what a, what a, what a poor night from Vic. No, dude, Victor Oladipo was a dog out there tonight. And I, I think you would say like a lot of what they, that Gabe Vincent brought last year, so much has been talked about, you know, trying to find the Tyler Hero role and the igniter. This guy was diving for loose balls. He was putting the clamps on people. He was stealing. He was getting charges. He was just energy all over the place, man. Vic was just so dynamic, I thought, especially in that first half of bringing this team a grittiness and a toughness in you know what was a bit of a, a an ugly game back and forth obviously there was a the ball was kind of getting kicked all over the place and it wasn't like the uh it wasn't the prettiest basketball game in the world I just thought that Vic uh brought such a great temperature for what this team needed uh tonight so a lot of great stuff you also you know from uh you know, didn't get a great shooting night from anybody other than uh other than Caleb Martin I would say and Tyler making the uh the the, the clutch three there but you know, a lot of uh, the struggles from Max Strews continued from three tonight. Although Duncan Robinson, he's only three away now from passing Tim Hardaway for the all-time franchise lead. And Duncan actually did hit a couple of big threes there in the fourth quarter. What turned out to be big threes. You didn't know that you were going to need them, um, but you did. You did. And so um, this is a game where, like, afterwards, going to be a lot of thoughts on LeBron James. And we got some uh, an interesting <laughs> chapter to that, too, that we're going to get to. But uh, this was Eric Spolstra on uh, trying to do what they can to slow down LeBron. Yeah, um, and we had a couple um, mistakes, well, more than a couple. Uh, and, of course, he's going to force you into mistakes. Uh, they missed, you know, three or four threes um, when we weren't, we, we weren't totally um, on the same page of rotating and getting, getting to guys. Uh, uh, but, you know, it just really helps to have somebody like Jimmy, you know, throughout the course of the game that's going to take that challenge. And, you know, he's coming off of uh, an injury, and there was no question of, like, who's going to match up with him to start the game and then for the majority of the possessions. Then in the fourth quarter, they went small with LeBron at the five, and um, I joked about it before the game. I never had the guts to do that, uh, but that, that's unique. So you have Bam, you have Jimmy. They were doing a great job on one another. Bam, uh, you know, the connection, the the aggressiveness that he had. He also dunked on Max Struess's head at one point. He posterized his own guy, which I, I don't recall that happening a lot. 
Was yeah, I, I seen him. It was on purpose. <laughs> it was on purpose. That's why I did all this, because I dunked on Max. Other thing that was interesting with Bam that I thought was great about it is he goes from a spot where he, you know, possibility that him and Jimmy could sit the fourth quarter. And, you know, Jimmy ends up coming out in the fourth anyway, but could have been a, an easy night for them. And, and they're probably thinking to themselves, you know, this could be, uh, you know, maybe we'll sit. And instead, I think Bam sat one minute in the, uh, in the entire se- second half. I seen that. So, you know, to go, you, you, I really thought though, I respect the, uh, the gear switch that he had to go there with, uh, with Spo, even though Spo was kind of joking about this after the game. Um, and that speeds things up. Uh, so then, you know, I brought Bam back and what I play him basically every minute in the second half. And, hey, you know, you're out with, you know, sickness. You're welcome to coming back and playing, you know, 23 minutes in the second half, uh, which was needed. So if you don't have a guy like Bam and they, you know, um, try to, to speed you up, you know, with LeBron at the five, uh, it could have been a disaster. But. Those fourth quarter minutes, LeBron, was, I mean, Bam was able to match up with him, and we we're at least able to stay home a little, a little bit more. And Tyler Hero uh, hitting that big time bucket and, and growing all over the place, and uh, he was getting a lot of love from Jimmy Butler afterwards. I've been doing that all year now. So the yeah. teammate had faith in him. Whoever threw him the ball, boy wonder. Jimmy threw me the ball because he got double teamed. <laughs> he was wide open. I was wide open. Was able to make the shot. The, no matter what the game gives him, no matter if he's making shots or missing shots, um, that's what scores do. Really good scores, at least. They're going to shoot the ball when they're open. They're going to keep shooting, and we want him to do that. We want everybody to do that, honestly. Um, but if he's open, which I don't know why you would leave him anyways, but you know you did, and he rose up and knocked down that shot. Um, pretty much sealed the game for us. Now, the other side note to this game Aside from the Heat going over 500, now embarking on a uh, a tough, tough road trip, uh, the Heat seems like they sent LeBron James spir- spiraling a little bit. Like LeBron is uh, turning 38 years old in a couple days, and he it was interesting before the game there was a big LeBron love fest from Spo, which you know like it's such an interesting history. Like you're talking about. The, the most famous run that this franchise has had um, such a feather in the cap of the front office for the flexibility, such a feather in the cap for, you know, honing in the best years LeBron's ever had and, and winning the most championship than he has with any other team. And, you know, he's tried to replicate that in other places and he still won, but maybe he hasn't won. He has not won at the level that he has with the, uh, with the Miami heat, you know, four finals trips and, winning half the championships he's uh you know he's had good runs he had a good run second run in cleveland for sure um definitely had to go up against a juggernaut in the warriors so um that's there's that and then this lakers run's been really weird i mean you talk about the injuries to him to anthony davis them winning in the bubble uh you know winning against a, a heat team that was was banged up so they got some some fortuitous luck with the uh with the injuries the heat losing their all their playoff leading score going into that and having bam with basically one arm uh and jimmy butler still was able to get two games against him so you know it's an interesting it's an interesting pass man it's an interesting dynamic between lebron and the heat i mean i i would say that there's there's been some hostility at some times there's been pettiness thrown back and forth a lot of the details that came out with LeBron's exit from Miami a lot of that stuff's been smoothed over now I mean like the fans everybody who comes there there was a a bunch of Lakers fans there tonight but I think even the Miami fan just enjoys seeing LeBron James you don't know how much longer it's gonna be even there you know there tonight you're like man you watch him and you, you you're still in awe of what he's able to do physically it's still not maybe the explosiveness, but you know, he still scares you. I mean, definitely there were times in that, that Lakers run. You're like, e. if he would have had a couple of guys out there who could uh, actually hit a three point shot, you know, you might've been talking about a, 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 a great comeback engineered by LeBron, but he had these comments after the game where he was being asked about how much longer he wants to play. And basically it just goes on this diatribe about how he doesn't, have it in his dna anymore to 
to play for teams that aren't winning. And it's interesting. It, you know, let me see if I can get the exact quote here for you from uh, LeBron on this because it was it was a it was a fascinating thing that happened. Uh, obviously, in his his former home building. And here is what he uh, he had to say. I'm a, I'm a winner, and I want to win. And um, you know, I want to win and, and give myself a chance to. To, to win and still compete for championships. Um, that has always been my my passion, has always been my goal since I entered the league at an 18 year old kid out of Akron, Ohio. And I know it takes steps to get there. But once you get there and you know how to get there, um, playing basketball at this level just to be playing basketball is not, it's not in my DNA. It's not in my DNA. Um, anymore, so you know, we, we see what happens and see how how fresh my mind stays over the over the next couple of years. Damn, I mean that is interesting, juicy stuff from uh, from him after the game. The Heat's him spiraling, dude. Um, you know they got a win last night in Orlando, and you know you come into a building where you have you know people would say your best seasons. And it's interesting. You look at what the Lakers have done, and they're kind of like they won a championship, but they're the anti-heat. Like they're kind of willy-nilly with stuff. They're just kind of feel like they're shooting from the hip. Um, and I think with LeBron, like, you know, he maybe needs to go to a place where they're not gonna listen to every whim that he has at the end of the year with uh, try for Russell Westbrook. You know, part of this is on him, but part of it is bad luck too. Like he's he saddled up with what he thought was a generational talent in Anthony Davis. But Anthony Davis just can't stay healthy. It's it's he, he looked like he was back to his old world self, but you could just never rely on the guy, which is you know a lot of probably maybe what scared him with the end with Dwayne, um, and maybe part of the reason why he did want to get out of here. But you know now he's dealing with a guy who's still young. I mean Dwayne was you know at least you know okay you could understand that guy's going to be on the other side of it. He didn't know when he was going to be in and out of the lineup on that last season, so. It's an interesting thing, man. I'm just going to say, like, look, watching him tonight, uh, waltzing around that building, a lot of chummy hugs were going around with UD, with other Heat players, with Heat executives, with Hoop True people. I mean, this dude was handshaking and hugging with a lot of people around the building. You know, I would say the only person who gets chummier hugs over the last, uh, over this season that I've seen has been Goron. But LeBron was, uh, he was, you know, he was, he was hobnobbing, dude, hobnobbing with Heat players, hobnobbing with Heat front office peeps. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was an interesting, uh, it was an interesting watch. And now you hear those comments, and you're thinking to himself, well, if he does not finish out with the Lakers, you know, knowing that he did sign his extension, if he doesn't finish, what is the, what is the ending for? Him? Is it Cleveland? Are you gonna do a third stint in Cleveland? We know him, the owner, not a great relationship. Um. You know, there's always the thing about following his kid wherever his kid gets drafted. Who knows if LeBron's where his son's going to end up? Who knows if his son, when his son is going to be NBA ready? Who knows? You know, his son might not be a one and done. You don't know. Like that, this idea that he's going to play till 40. Okay, it's a good thing to say. But, um, you know, LeBron's also had his, uh, a bunch of injuries that he's had to deal with and is not the, the, the superhuman Hulk that he was you know, back when he was with the Miami Heat where he'd twist an ankle and it feels like he was bionic, man. He could kick it back at any time. So uh, if he were to end up in another place, a, 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 another finish line, would Miami make a lot of sense? Especially in a scenario where they keep Jimmy and Bam and that is a team that you would think is really ready to win. Hard to say. Now, obviously, this would have to come with an apology to Pat Riley for making him wait in that lobby at the blackjack table with Andy Ellisberg and not looking up from your World Cup game. That would have to obviously that goes without saying, you know, but it does seem like a, it does seem like, you know, with Dwayne's last day, it does seem like cooler heads have prevailed that a lot of people I'm just saying, you know, it would be nice to see publicly. Just saying, but. It's interesting. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here. If, if, if listen, if Leroy is lucky. I don't have a show today. He is lucky that we're on vacation, because I would definitely be stirring the pot on this on full tilt 
because it's not crazy. It's not a crazy thing. Like you listen, you hear those comments. He says that in, in, in the heat's house, um, knowing the credibility of the heat's organization and knowing that Pat Riley makes it likes to make big home run cuts, knowing Pat Riley's up there too. I think Pat Riley and, and LeBron, you think about basketball mentality, basketball men, uh, mortality and actual mortality of, you know, Pat wants to finish out this last, you know, this last build, you know, that's what he said. LeBron, I'm sure he wants to get that one more championship, get to five at least. And, you know, now you would do theoretically, let's say he comes back and he does it with the, he gets three with the heat, at least three with one franchise, you know, uh, uh, not exactly the, uh, the prototypical way of doing it with getting it with uh, multiple championships with a, with a certain franchise or three championships with a certain franchise, but you know, still kind of sticking. You haven't gone to a gazillion teams over your career for one of the all time great players. You know, you're, you're still have taken, uh, uh, for whatever reason breaks from Cleveland and Miami in this weird scenario. If it were to be, or maybe this was just a warning shot to the Lakers front office. I don't know, but it was an interesting, uh, it definitely was like, huh, that's uh, you know, could be something, could be nothing. That's something dude. <laughs> He's saying that. That's something. And it was very chummy around that building tonight. So either way, look, nothing's happening here likely this year. But uh, the Heat got uh, their hands full with a really tough road trip. They got a rematch with LeBron coming up up on the road. Denver, Utah, the two L.A. teams, and Phoenix. So uh, they got their work cut out for them and, uh, you know, got to keep this thing uh, rolling after a nice win tonight. 